So today we have a special guest operating the camera, um, henceforth referred to as the cameraman since I lack another nickname for someone operating a camera. So today we're going to be unboxing the Prolimatech Armageddon CPU cooler. This is for socket 1366 and 1156 motherboards. It's uh, without sacrificing space, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it comes with 100% brawn. I actually saw this package on our shelf and I was like, yeah, I gotta unbox that because it is an exceptionally cool package. They've got their Armageddon branding here with their flames coming off of it, and then they've got their uh, silvery kind of shiny logo on here. It looks really cool. It kind of looks like a smiling guy. Like there's his unibrow, and there's his eyes and nose and mouth, and then you pull this off somehow. It actually has instructions here, so you flip and lift. So why don't we do that? Actually, let's have a quick look at the specs first. So we've got the heatsink dimensions here, which you can probably read as long as the camera is focusing all right today. It comes with aluminum fins, lead-free solder on all the contact points. It's made of copper for the heat pipes and base, and it is nickel plated on the heat pipes and base. And then the fins are aluminum, so they don't need to be nickel plated. It weighs 750 grams without a fan. So that's almost two pounds hanging off your CPU socket. And fan compatibility is 140 millimeter by 140 millimeter, by 25 millimeters. So we flip and then lift. Ooh. Oh, look at this. You can actually see through a window. You can see the uh, Prolimatech uh, logo just like that. Okay, but we don't need that anymore. Okay, so we just slide everything out all in sort of one go here. And then the first thing we find is a user's manual. So this shows all of the stuff that comes with the Armageddon as well as a uh, little illustration. Okay, and got a little list here so you can go through and make sure that everything is there. Then we have the instructions on how to install the Armageddon. So here it is, steps one to four, to six, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And some of these are sort of multiple steps in one, but overall the process looks quite simple and I wouldn't worry about not being able to do it or anything like that. So in here we have an accessory pack which contains all of the stuff on that list. So we've got a Prolimatech uh, thermal compound, which looks an awful lot like MX2, so it's probably pretty good. Then we have the bracket. So these actually go, where do these go? This is an interesting mounting system. I'm, um, I'm not really sure I understand why it's so beefy, but it's kind of cool, I guess, because you've got like these huge huge aluminum chunks. They feel like they're made out of aluminum, although I could be wrong. And then so those go on your CPU socket just like that. And then you actually have a bolt through and that hardware is probably in here that goes all the way through your motherboard and then secures somehow. So yeah, here's some huge uh, thumb screws and a bunch of other stuff. Press here. Okay, cool. Here's a backplate. This backplate is compatible. It looks like with 1156, 1366, as well as 775, although they don't advertise 775 compatibility on the box. So it's possible it doesn't include the hold down. Here we go. Here's the Armageddon. So the first thing you notice about it is that this is a natively supporting 140 millimeter cooler. So most of the tower heat sinks I've seen in the past are actually quite a bit narrower and the reason for that is that they only support 140 millimeter as an afterthought. There are 120 millimeter heat sink that kind of has clips on it for 140 mil. So this wideness is what's going to give you the ability to take all of these heat pipes and line them up within each fin side within each side of the fins. So here we've got actually a total of one, two, three, four, five, six standard size heat pipes. So these look like six millimeter heat pipes. Uh, they don't look like the larger eight millimeter ones, but we've got six of them that are all coming out of the base. So the ones that go through the middle of the base are actually going out to the very outside of the heat sink. And there's a very specific reason for that. And that's because the outside of the heat sink is where you're actually gonna get the most airflow because of the shape of a fan's blades. So that's why all the ones that are at the very outside are actually kind of in the middle where they're not going to be nearly as useful. Let me see if there's something else we can say about it. So we've got kind of a shiny top on the top and you can sort of probably see my face if I can look at the camera in that. So it's very, very, very shiny. I'll do the obligatory uh, finger shot here where you can see how reflective it is. It's also very flat. So when you have this installed in your case, it's going to look, um, so you'll basically be able to look at yourself through it. 
We've got the aluminum fins are quite dense actually, so you're going to want to pick a fan that's got reasonably good static pressure because some heat sinks will actually have more spacing in between the fins. Now that comes at a cost to performance because it won't perform quite as well, but the advantage of having the tight packed fins is that if you do have a high pressure fan, you can get more performance out of it. Whereas the low density fins, if you have a low performance fan, then you can actually get better performance out of it than a densely packed fin arrangement. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. The camera says no, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I think that pretty much wraps up my unboxing of the Prolima Tech Armageddon. Thank you for checking it out. And don't forget to subscribe. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching my blog. Yeah, I forgot to show the shininess of the base. So there it is. Get the angle there. You can see the reflection of the finger. It's not that reflective, but it is a slightly bowed base. So you're going to get good contact pressure out of it. And that is by design that it's not completely flat. So you never want to lap a heat sink with a bowed base. I'm just kind of guessing it has a bowed base based on looking at the reflection of a straight line through it and seeing that it has a bit of a, a curve to it. You won't be able to see that in the camera, but um, I'm pretty sure they would all come with one if this one does. I hope it wasn't intended to be flat because then I sort of have ruined everything now, haven't I? Thank you for watching my blog and now we're actually done.